high. So we talked about this before, didn't we? So EP3 is now on, ready to go. Just going to do a couple of base runs. What are we doing to this? So skunk two headers, exhaust, intake manifold, 70 mm throttle body, link like the K20 plug and play, and a link can lambda. Just a pretty much straightforward kind of build. The reason we're actually using a lot of the Lincoln Haltech products on these instead of like Hondatas now is just because they're becoming very difficult to get and it's not a huge price jump up, you know, talking like I think it's like 400 bucks or $500 more for the Link. So we're using the Link in this one because these have some sort of serial connection to the dash for the um, fuel tank gauge and I think the coolant gauge as well. So what we're doing is. Um, if you say we've fitted Haltex to these before but you've got to run kind of like an external can gauge so you can get the readings for those but the link um, this is the first time we're trying it in the EP3 they said that it should work so we'll give that a go but um, yeah if you're looking at turning your DC5 or your EP3 you know link and Haltex both do plug and place for them and they're not that much more but you can do so much more with a Haltex and a link compared to say like a K-Pro or something like that because you're still kind of limited to what factory uh, ECU can pretty much run so, um, yeah, that's what we're doing with this, so let's get into it. So today we're uh, fitting an off-the-shelf skunk exhaust, skunk exhaust, skunk exhaust to this EP3 Civic. So far, we've come across a couple of little curveballs. All the factory bolts are rusted and stuck. Some of them are snapping. Some of them don't want to come out. So yeah, we're working around that. It's taking a little bit longer than we anticipate, but that's what happens with old stuff. You know, OEM parts, especially on Hondas, they rust. So yeah, we're just trying to get the rusty bolts out the back of the heat shield for the headers at the moment and then we can fit the new system. We love that. There's not a lot of room down the back here either, so... Hard to get tools in. Success. This is the magic bolt removing source. We're gonna keep the recipe hidden <laughs> for now. Ah, so this ep 3 has come in. We've got a link plug and play ECU for it. It's probably the first time we've actually used a link plug and play on an ep 3 so just getting my head around how it's going to work because Link are the only ones aftermarket ECUs that we know that have got the dash to actually work. Most of the other ones don't have the can comps or the can line comps to go back. We are going to run their can lambda so I'm just going to look where we can push the um, can wire through inside the car. These are a pain in the butt because there's not much grommet holes and the steering rack's on back on the firewall so you have to be a bit careful of where you put your wiring because the suspension and the steering does move, so you gotta make it the right place. All right, so we're about to uh, start dropping the subframe so we can get the headers out, because there's not a whole lot of room on these EP3 Civics. So yeah, we're gonna drop the subframe, get the wheels off, get the headers out, and then get the rest of the new exhaust system back in the car. That one actually came undone. That was good. So far it's just been all rusty bolts. Yep. 
couple of sneaky uh, lines attached to it. We need to get first. This guy here. Looks like just one. Pretty bulky. I'm gonna replace that with a nice set of uh, stainless steel heaters. Uh, I'd say this would definitely be a bit lighter than the uh, the old cast stuff. Definitely gonna sound a shitload better. There we have it. New skunk alpha heaters. Let's see if they fit. <laughs> So far, so good. Being a mechanic is all about getting into weird places. <laughs> we have to push it up as we, as we go up. Oh, this is the world's fucking slowest jack. This is, yeah. <laughs> nah. Well, pump up the jack, pump that up. We're gonna be here for a while. The heat is in. We're going to tighten the bolts up. We're going to finish putting the rest of the stuff on. Looks like, uh, same as the DC5, we're going to have to change the sway bar links to uh, rotate the sway bar backwards so it actually clears the headers. It's a bit of an issue on uh, most of the aftermarket options. So uh, we've found that these uh, skunk two headers don't actually fit this EP3 properly. Uh, there's a bit of a clearance issue here with the sway bar. Not having enough room, so we actually can't even get it to mount. Fortunately, we've seen this problem before and we've fixed it, so we're just gonna have to pull the headers back off. Yeah, we had to test fit them to see if they'd actually fit. Unfortunately, they don't, so they're coming back off. Do you know why they won't fit? Because they are made for an American vehicle, with Skunk being an American company. Their cars and the variants are slightly different to the ones we have over here in New Zealand. So, I guess they've designed for that purpose and intent. Uh, they weren't really designed to fit the uh, models that we have here in New Zealand. So, unfortunately, uh, a lot of people buy these without realising that. Uh, we tried to swap the sway bar from the Type S Integra onto this. It nearly fits, it's very close but it still doesn't fit. So uh, yeah, we still have a problem with headers not fitting. So now we're going to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to the pub later, but for now, we're gonna try and uh, figure out a solution. Maybe get some different headers, match them up to the rest of the exhaust, and hopefully, uh, yeah, we can come up with a solution pretty quickly. Been another stressful day. <laughs> Callan's super happy because he's, uh, he's not really achieved much today, that's not, nothing of his fault. So yeah, the two biggest things in the performance industry, or what happens here, is that you'll get parts that are being manufactured poorly or something like that, or there's issues with the with the, the production of it that you're having to fix. Can I say fuck ups? I'll say fuck ups. This is another one where, unfortunately, I don't know what's happened here, either the customer has ordered the wrong parts under his, because he believed he didn't do his research enough, or the company that had supplied the parts to him were, didn't have all the information and have supplied it thinking it was going to fit. So we were going to fit some Skunk 2 headers, Skunk 2 exhaust system, their intake manifold, I think it's a Skunk 2 Ultra, and a 70mm throttle body. The problem is, being an EP3, they list the EP3 headers for an EP3 SI. Now this is a Type R. Sway bar is completely different. Sometimes on some of the downpipes, or sorry, headers that we do on cars, like you have to put extended links on the sway bar just to angle them so then the, the headers fit. This, it just nowhere near close, like it doesn't matter if, if you can't even put like extenders on them or whatever, it just will not work. Luckily, Speed Science had some PLM headers, so they're gonna swap these ones out. We're gonna carry on, do the intake manifold, um, so we at least feel like we've achieved something today, but. I agree. We love cars. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, EP3 on the dyno, finally. A uh, few days have passed, all the little problems have been sorted out. Headers have been fitted, <laughs> went for the uh, PLM ones in the end. 
you just have to make an adjustment to the sway bar and then they fit like normal. You do not have to remove your sway bar. You do not have to put the sway bar in the bin. They're quite an important thing for a road car. Um, it's just a little modification you're going to do the sway bar links. The mega power exhaust is on, the ultra street intake manifold is on, and the link plug-in K20 ECU is in. First time we've used one of those. We generally use the Haltech stuff but the link seemed to be the best option for this car. So it's got the new link plug-in already configured and in, in the car. Dan had to change a few things on the base mat but started and drove it over here fine. And now Dan's gonna tune it. So should make around the 150 kilowatt mark somewhere around there. Should be a cool little car for the owner. And yeah, it's just a pretty basic package, just intake, header and exhaust. So yeah. We'll be good to finally get back into it since I've been away for the last sort of eight or ten days or something like that with the spicy cough. So, be good. Now, um, I'm going to say something, I don't know how to say it without being offensive, but uh, Link... I don't know if this is because I'm wearing a Haltech jumper or something like that, but the Link that's in this is not playing game. The reason why we picked it is because the last EP3 did, uh, we did put a Haltech Elite 1500 in it, and apparently we found out after we fitted it, it didn't have the serial hardware on the board, so none of the shit like the AC or the coolant temp gauge worked. So we were like, called Link, Link were like, yeah, sweet, our ECU will do it. So chuck the link in and I've got other problems. So I should have actually looked at their base map a little bit because their base map link, sorry, but it's shit. Um, first of all, VVT timing requesting 37 degrees cam advance at idle. <laughs> Car doesn't run. So because I'm a nice guy, I will make up a base map based on a factory Honda EP3 car because I can pull that data off Honda. I'll make something up for you. I need to go back to the drawing board and use that as my base tune for this before I actually start you know really pushing it but I will get that done so I'm gonna go upstairs because it's easier on my computer than my laptop and yeah we'll make a base file so you know I've been doing this probably 19 years now Honda's is pretty much what I learned on so I've done heaps of them so I'll just take what I know and make something for you oh, uh, one more thing just regarding the, the Haltech jumper Link send me some Link jumpers <laughs>
Yeah, EP3 all done, dusted. We'll get it off the dyno. We've put some fuckboy launch control and pop some bangs on the D-cell, which the customer wanted, but so, which is all right. Had some issues with the map, other than uh, some parts not fitting right, which I think we've touched on with Kellen. It's got the Link K20 plug and play. Turns out that Link haven't actually really developed their base map, so their base map shit. That's okay, I called them up, gave them shit for it, and uh, they've asked me to make one for them, so I'll uh, flip through a base map that I've got. The issues I found is one, the VVT cam angle uh, for the intake cam on these, um, for the VTC was like not even set. Pretty much as soon as you start the car, it was requesting like 40 degrees intake advance, so the car wouldn't even start properly. And also when you gave it a little bit of throttle, I don't know, it seems to be in their purge valve mapping, so for the EVAP. So when you give it just a little bit of throttle, it's like the EVAP stuck open and then starts sucking in gas off the tank. So I, um, took their default purge map that they have in the G4X and just made my own output. So that's um, a little bit better. Oh, they weren't using any jill tables for the VTEC crossover map, which I always do, but um, that's all done. So anyway, um, finished up with about 164 at the wheels. I think I did get a run at 166 on Saturday when I was here, but um, I just wanted to play around with my, my fuel maps. Does a little bit of a rich crossover point, but I've um, smoothed out in some later runs. Oh, that was a little bit worse but that was a partial throttle run that i was trying to do so i've gone through tuned it at like wide open throttle at 80 percent throttle 70 percent 60 percent just work my way through and that's why you've got different maps that are dropping down you know make less power each time you know some of these ones are really really low that's only at like 50 percent throttle but as you can see the mixtures are way off so i had to go through and recalibrate all those so they're all been done but yeah Good results, 145 factory, so 164, so we're talking 20 kilowatts, but that is with PLM headers, Skunk 2, 3 inch exhaust, Skunk 2 ultra manifold, and the 70 mil throttle body. Um, already had a pod filter and intake pipe on it. So yeah, 20 kilowatt, it's about what I'd expect with those mods. The one thing I'd probably like to touch on on these cars on all K20s, and we've done it from previous testing, factory air boxes are super restrictive so we had a car that was making about 140 to 143 kilowatt factory wheel and just by sticking an intake pipe on it we found like eight or ten kilowatts so anyone with a honda start with your intake first intake um headers and exhaust are probably next on the list and then you can do your manifold and stuff afterwards manifold helps a little bit of a top end they don't tend to fall over at the top but yeah good gains yeah nice little package and really good results <laughs>